I want to know more about your role uh, in the organization and the programs, uh, specific programs that you are leading. Well, I'm one of various programmers and I might be a rather particular case because I have a little patch of a garden, so to speak, on my own. So I'm probably one of the very few people in the organizational team who is really working alone in some ways. On the other, in another way, I'm maybe the most dependent on the others because uh, so far you cannot enter anything for my uh, section. So basically I depend on the others to notice if there is something in the uh, submissions that would be of interest for me. So it's um, in that regard, I'm, let's say a loose gun and on the other hand, the, the most helpless fellow around. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, uh, Rotterdam presents three Iranian classic films, uh, The Crown Jewels of Iran by Ibrahim Gulistan, uh, Chess of the Vine by Mohammad Reza Aslani, and Deer by uh, Masoud Kimyai. How did you know about these three titles? Well, it's very simple. I mean, um, Chess of the Wind was... Uh, I dare say the biggest revelation on the international, um, let's say, festival circuit last year when it comes to old films, restorations. I mean, that was one of the films that everybody went crazy about. Um, I would say justly so, it's a great film. I was a little bit surprised that people were in general really so in awe of it, not because, um, I think there's no reason to be in awe of it, but more because I would think, okay, mm, this is the kind of Iranian cinema people usually don't really know anymore how to deal with it. So I was a little bit surprised that, um, that really so many people liked it. Um, so that was actually no big deal to discover. This was really one of the biggest um, restorations around in 2020, so to speak. And uh, it's the only, let's say, big, widely seen uh, and appreciated restoration that I put in that I put into my program. Because um, to me, a lot of this restoration presentation business at festivals like Cannes Classics, Venice Classics, Berlinale Classics, etc. has a certain nostalgic touch. Mm -hmm. All our yesterdays now looking better than ever. But this is not what the works of film archives is about and this is also not what film history is about. This film history is not about the past, how weird this might sound. Film history is about what we want from the future. So what we talk about in terms of film history is what we project, what we, uh, um, let's say, is, is a shape of projection from what we want to see get realized. So it's, uh, for me, the, um, the kind of mission, therefore, in Cinema Regained is, to really offer an idea of how film history can be an interesting vision of how we could want to be, look like. So it's that's why I try to have a very diverse program in terms of uh, aesthetics, also in terms of lengths, but also in terms of, um, of uh, let's say, uh, geographic spread. Mm -hmm. And yes, also the gender thing. But the problem is um, uh, actually two of my films by women went actually over to other sections, basically because uh, I thought, well, we could have them here. I basically invited them, but they also would look uh, good in Harbor. And uh, then a lot of mishaps happened. So quite a few things that I had hoped for, for this year will then be in the next edition. So basically there was decidedly more in the back of my mind in terms of uh, presenting female filmmakers than we have now, so to speak. But um, we will get there once the pandemic is over. And for example, it will be uh, easier and more certain to show something in cinema, which was, for example, for one um, elderly lady from Croatia, really her biggest wish. So um, 
so that was in terms of in more widely what we are trying there with uh, cinema regained uh, so uh, chess of the wind was the, the one big movie so to speak um crown jewels of iran happened really by accident I was talking with um, the guy who then basically took care of uh, um, of uh, the restoration, uh, Ehsan, he was involved with that because he knows Golestan and he was also deeply involved with the restoration of Chess of the Wind. And um, he mentioned that he has this as a project and I was like, oh yeah, Crown Jewels of Iran restored uncensored version, the version where he really says everything. And he was like, yep, the version that nobody has seen and only a few have heard about the one where he says everything. Mm -hmm. Said, okay, can you manage till uh, till uh, February? Yeah, okay, we've got a deal. Um, so this is how this happened. This happened in two minutes, standing in a cinema, just shooting the shit, so to speak. And um, so, if, if I hadn't asked, maybe the restoration wouldn't be finished yet. It would be still in the main. But this is also something that a festival is good for, to speed things up, to offer an opportunity and so that people can say, OK, we get invited there. Let's make it happen. So the deer, haha, well, that's, uh, that is, that, that's one of the really most basic things I want to do with this program. Um, I'm always monumentally pissed off when one shows something of a documentary nature and where we get to, to, to for me, to a very special nature of, of careless crime. And you don't show something with it. So it's like you, you make people hungry, but then you are not feeding them. Mm -hmm. Shitty behavior. So um, that's why we have, um, for example, this Finnish film, Dinosaur, and we are showing one of the films by the director about whom Dinosaur talks, Rauni Moerberje. We have a documentary about Maria Luisa Bemberg. So we are showing also a film by Maria Luisa Bemberg. So very simple. Mm. Um, but I think, as I said, this, it always annoyed me when people do that, show a film about maybe even somebody you don't no, those films are not as easily accessible and then don't give you the opportunity to immediately watch something. In the case of careless crime, this is kind of the same thing. So I watched the film in Venice. I was completely blown away beyond belief. I mean, this was for me one of the by far greatest films of the last year. And what I liked about that film was that it is essentially a film historical essay in the shape of a fiction feature. So when I was talking with people in Venice, I noticed I was the only person in the, uh, in the whole fucking festival, it seemed, who actually understood the film because, hey, I knew the deer. I'm also, I also do know my little bit of sacred defense cinema and other stuff. So I had a pretty good idea what this was about, but I noticed that really nobody understood this film and everybody was like, what on earth is this deer thing? And I said, well, if you were Iranian, you know what the deer thing would be. Um, and um, so I thought, okay, if we show careless crime, then by God, we will show the deer and may it only be so that the audience can see this film that they are talking about for almost 130 minutes and that they are quoting like mad and reenacting like that. And in the film Careless Crime, you only see on one screen a fragment of the image for about five seconds. That's all you see of the deer. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, okay, this film is evoking a film that international audiences simply don't know. So to help people understand what careless crime is, I thought it's, it's a must to show the deer. And um, yeah, and basically we got access to um, 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 a very complete 
version of the deer. You probably know that the deer was censored quite a bit. Mm -hmm, yeah. So we should have actually a very complete version that came through sources. Mm. And um, I didn't make a big fuss about that, that it's really the uncensored version, as far as we can say, but it is the version that you probably can't see anywhere. Mm -hmm. As I said, I didn't want to draw too much attention to that and I just basically thought, okay, if people see the length, they should understand what this is, mm -hmm. um, which is, let's say, for the Iranian perspective and for the foreigners, I thought, let's not go into all the complications of that film and the whole history. Let them watch it and have a basic framework of why it's important to see this film. But if I go into basically into all of it, my God, we are talking for the next weeks. And yes, I knew the film already because I'm actually quite fascinated by Masoud Kimiai. So I've been actually, I think I saw my first uh, Kimiai film when I was 16 or 17 in a really ratty um, video projection in a cinema that did a, an Iranian retrospective in my hometown. And I mean, the, the VHS projection looked like shit, but I thought, my God, this guy is interesting to say the least. Mm -hmm. really interesting so i've been basically following what he has been doing um i'm very aware what a troublesome and complicated figure he is but uh, i do cherish wrestling with the troublesome and complicated figures so it's uh, i don't need to embrace them to find them intellectually and at times also emotionally stimulating and certainly worth thinking about have you also talked with the film director? Uh, and do you know how they feel about uh, this program or this restoration? Have you, for example, talked with Golestan or Kimiai? Um, um, well, I mean, the Kimiai film is not a restoration, right? So it's uh, this was just made, let's put it like that. Um, in terms of uh, Kimiai, um, it's actually this, I mean, all of this comes more or less from one guy. And he had actually, um, and we were actually able to do uh, a Skype or Zoom talk with uh, Mohammad Reza Aslani. Yeah. So that's actually on the website. And um, which seems to be, uh, I was told, also a rarity because it seems everybody was talking about the film, but nobody talking with him um, about, well, I was actually thinking, I was grateful that basically he even agreed to do that. In the case of Golestan, um, I mean, he's happy like a clam boy that this is happening. And he actually wrote to the festival um, a very nice letter saying, I'm sorry, I'm 99 years old. I would really like to come, but maybe not at this time. And could anybody tape the introduction in the cinema? That was like, my God, the guy is mad. Um, I mean, I mean, Hey, I mean, for being 99 years old, he's actually still in good shape. I mean, I think I saw him like six years ago or so, and I was like, my God. It's difficult to imagine that this guy is over 90. I mean, he has was, I mean, back then, yes, he, you could see that he aged, but my God, he still had a swagger and he was as cantankerous as ever. Uh, so it's... Uh, I mean, he's, I mean, he's super happy. Um, Aslani is very, very happy. And Kimi Yayi is uh, befuddled and happy. Let's put it like this. I mean, he was like, uh, aha, okay. Um, and he found it interesting that uh, it seems, I mean, what uh, this, this friend of mine who helped us with that um, told me that he was, uh, that we would actually show these films together. It seems so, so far nobody had the idea. I've, I've no idea why one couldn't have that idea, but it seems nobody did so far. I don't know why. For me, it's obvious, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the directors are quite uh, intrigued and uh, quite happy. Mm -hmm. yes. And Yes, and how usually you know about uh, interesting titles to, for restoration? Is it uh, by going to other festival talking with sales agents or are there, for example, a specific titles that you are looking for restoration and, and sometimes you order those kind of restoration? Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, 
how do I do that? Okay, um, well, for one thing, I'm on the artistic board of the, of the Cinema di Trovato, the archive film festival in Bologna. And which should give you an idea that I'm quite well connected in the archival world. Let's put it like that. Um, I do this the same way I do actually most of my stuff, very discreet and casual, which is the, the way that basically we did things with the restoration of, um, of um, the crown jewels of Iran is how I usually find out about stuff. It's really usually just standing somewhere talking with somebody and then so, and what are you guys are, uh, up to? Oh, we are doing this and this. This is boring. Keep it for Khan Classics. So what are you interestingly doing? Oh, we are also working on these short animations. This is a bingo. So you think we can get a look at this? And so it's, it's like this. It's basically really very, very informal. Very casual, very informal. Um, it's difficult to imagine this now that I'm talking like uh, like a torrent, uh, but I'm very good at listening. Mm -hmm. So I'm very good at listening to people, and they know that I'm that I'm curious. That um, they can talk to me about stuff that they may not really talk to, talk about with others. For example, we have. Uh, um, we have two Swiss um, uh, restorations from the Swiss Cinematheque uh, of the director Henri Brandt. And that happened essentially uh, again. I know the director of the Swiss Cinematheque uh, quite well. We are both passionate first row uh, sitters and always end up sitting together. And I was basically also asking him, so what are you guys up to? And uh, said, well, you know, we have this Henri Brandt centennial. We are restoring this whole car. I was like, Henri Brandt. Okay, now we are talking, my friend. And he was grinning and was like, "Well, if anybody would say that, I would. I knew you would. Say, you would say that." And I was like, mm. "And uh, so, um, indeed, this, most people would probably not know who Henri Brandt is. I know who Henri Brandt is and his importance. And um, well, it's." Um, it was also immediate, an immediate deal for me. So, um, and now basically it's, it's widening. I mean, now that we, are, we have started this, I'm getting settled, so to speak, with this role. And now we can operate in a different fashion. So we can now uh, also say, okay, this is what we are doing. This is how it looks. Um, and next time we want to have maybe something from this archive or we will call up Right, that archive, for example, I will try to have next year also something from the Taiwan Film Archive, which we this time I didn't have space for it, but next time I want to make space for it. Uh, we would have liked to have something from the Philippines, but big disaster there. But we are also working on that. So it's um, and yeah, and I mean we do. We've started that this year. We do support restorations from now on. This year we supported two uh, Japanese anime uh, um, uh, restorations, short films. And I was thinking for next year, I have to talk with some friends about an African filmmaker where I would like to see a restoration getting done and where they also have a certain vested interest. And let's see where we can do something there. So it's, um, so this is how these, these things happen. I, prefer to keep it all very, very low profile, very casual mm. among friends. Mm. And friends who maybe meet for the first time also due to this and then start to do stuff together and maybe also encourage each other and also say that, oh my God, you found this so interesting. Well, maybe we should think about, uh, because we have this and this in on our restoration pile, maybe we should think about looking at this the next time. And uh, yeah, so it's, I don't like to do things in too official a way. I'm very much a very hands down, very casual, 
very friendly, something that's you do this stuff with the people that you also have dinner with, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I try to expand my dinner circle, so to speak, immensely. So it's um, that's that's how we do this. And you mentioned that uh, you picked mainly uh, dear uh, to help audience understand the careless crime. I'm just thinking of, for example, uh, the Aslanis films. He is also kind of poet, and uh, his cinema also influenced by his interest in uh, poetry. So. Do you also, for example, uh, have kind of panels or conversations about Iranian poem or Iranian poets or stuff like that that you feel that might be relevant for audience to understand the film and, and the experimental nature that uh, such kind of work could have? Well, let's put it like with, um, I hope that this is not the last time we show something by um, Muhammad Reza Aslani. Yeah, let me just say this. I hope that this will be a, that this will see a continuation. Um, and I was talking with his daughter already about that. So let's see where this is going. Um, in general, Iranian cinema. <laughs> well, I have a monumental interest in that, but often not in the kind of stuff that people here are interested in. So that is making things not essentially easier. Let's put it like that. Um, I have a very strong interest in Iranian film history. Let's put it like that. Um, but I also noticed that local audiences in the sense of um, Western festival circle types, which do not have to be Westerners, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a mindset, so to speak, have very clear ideas about what Iranian films should look like and um, the stuff I like is not necessarily what they think is uh, is interesting, so this doesn't make uh, uh, life easier. Mm. So it's um, it's something I'm, as I said, I mean, for me, careless crime was really a godsend because it gave me the opportunity also to show something like the deer. Mm. Let's put it like this, and um, I immediately jumped at Crown Jewels of Iran and Chess of the Wind. Because this is, let's say, the kind of Iranian cinema that I'm interested in. So, and um, I'm very, very, I would be very happy to show more. Let's put it like that. Um, let's see whether we can that way get people interested in looking at Iranian cinema in a more complex way. Because I think the way people tend to look at Iranian cinema is very one dimensional and also very much informed by aesthetic and political parameters that are not necessarily Iranian. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, for your time. Uh, it was uh, great uh, talking with you. I wonder uh, uh, if you have anything uh, more uh, that you feel that it is necessary to talk about uh, in relationship to your program and Iranian film. Mm. The only thing I can say is, when will we have another film by Bahram Bezai? <laughs> That's all I want to say for the moment. Mm -hmm. Because my God, this is a filmmaker. I mean, I remember when I saw a complete retrospective by Bahram Bezai, I mean, that was life changing. That was genuinely life changing. That is a genius. My God. Um, that's, that's all I want to say in terms of when it comes to Iranian cinema. That's oh. all. <laughs> okay, then um, I hope this was uh, something you can work with. And or do you have any, any other questions? <laughs>